All right, good. He's in here. Let's go get. Let's do the one thing I don't want it. I'm gonna break it to him. Hmm. What do you want, Agent York? Where did you get that? Becky gave it to me. She also told me to tell you that she can't accept it. Can accept? What does that mean? Exactly what it sounds like, Quint. <laughs> I think she was extremely worried about you. I'm just guessing, but... She's been giving you the plants to make the red powder, hasn't she? Then you rode your bike out of town. You went on a trip, and you sold the powder somehow. You bought that ring with the money. That's why she gave me the ring. Whoa! She wants to stop you from making any more trips. She doesn't want you to get involved anymore with this. But... I did all this for her. I'm impressed. I started out delivering because I wanted the extra cash. But you know, things like this change over time. As you can see, her family is loaded and I live in a trailer house. She's out of my league, you know? And so I... I wanted to be the kind of guy she could be with. Quint, you already are. You didn't need money for that. <laughs> Have things gone too far? Because of me? Not at all, Quint. You can do things over. You're still young. Can you hold off on arresting me just for a little while? I want to apologize to her. And promise her that I'll never carry that junk again. Just give me a little time, please. I ain't arresting you. I'll turn myself in once I've talked to her, okay? Zach, what is he talking about? Huh? Why would I arrest an innocent youth such as yourself? Quint, I'm busy with a murder investigation here. We can talk about health food another time, okay? <laughs> if you really want to confess, you could always try a church. What do you think, Zach? I like it. It, it isn't much, but I want you to take this as a thank you gift. You acquired the wrench. Okay, the wrench. Zach, another young life saved. Good job. You're welcome. You're welcome. What the wrench does, it's <laughs> it is an unlimited use item. You can use it as many times as you want to hit people with wrenches, if that is your game. Look at your game, girl. Look at it. I will go ahead and carry the wrench on me because it's actually not a bad weapon if you want to break stuff. Break stuff. But. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> With that in mind, let's go ahead and go back. I got. See, I can get you here to this. To have this thing. When you see something that has durability max, it means it has max durability. Like, it will never die. So, I say. We go to the AMG. Because I think we're at the. Part where I, can, I don't have to worry about this anymore. And I actually want to get, go ahead and start this part that I'm not looking forward to. Yeah, it's a part that I'm not looking forward to. I bet you Emily's mad at me because that's what it would take so long. Emily, were you waiting outside for me? Should I have gone inside and started the 20 questions? Yes. Well, that would have been fine with me. Shall we get something to eat then? Someone should teach you how to be more considerate. Maybe. And now you want something to eat? I thought we were going to question Nick. We were. I'll change my mind. I was hungry.
Welcome, Mr. Agent. Hi, Olivia. Let me have your special for today. And some fresh coffee. Our special today is turkey. A turkey and gravy sandwich. Sound good? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Emily, you eat something, too. It'll be on the FBI. Okay, then. I'll go all out. I'll have the T-bone steak. I usually can't order it because it's a little too expensive. Hmm. Nick and Diane. They hardly make the perfect couple, do they? Is it widely known that they go drinking together, just the two of them? To be honest, I don't pay attention to these things. I was too honest. Not into local gossip? Well, when I moved here, I was still in high school, and I kept wearing the same wild clothes from my school in Seattle. I was young back then. And before I knew it, there were rumors all over the school. She'll screw anyone. That's what they said. Totally unfounded, of course. Yeah. Anyway, after that, I just sort of chose not to really trust gossip. I get where you're coming from. I used to dress like a hardcore punk rocker when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> you? A punk rocker? <laughs> Nobody took my side. Even when I had good grades, people rejected me just because of what I wore. I was young back then, too. <laughs> Even still, I just don't see you as a punk rocker. <laughs> and you laugh? Look at you. No makeup on. Dressed in uniform, eating a steak for lunch. Okay, back to work. Let's talk to Nick. Let's go talk to Nick. How you doing, good sir? What's up? Could you tell us what you were doing with the night of Anna was killed? Up to the bar of Diane. What did you talk about, Nick? Rembrandt Turner. Is that a problem? Art? No, not a problem. If you think Diane did, you're wrong. Nope, that's not it. Oh, so it's me you're after, isn't it? You're wrong again. Similar for the FBI, huh? That isn't the case either, Nick. I think there's something both of you are hiding. You can tell the people are hiding something by their reactions. Uh, tongue and hand movements, sweat, dirt, dry lips, neck angles, and such. I'm working here. If you aren't ordering anything, get out. You're a douchebag. <laughs> That's what you are. Alright. Once you leave this door. When you talk to her, Nick and Diane's story match up. It isn't hard evidence, but it certainly supports her alibi. Ah, uh, but the two of them could be in cahoots. I think we need to talk to Olivia again, Zach. I don't want to talk to anybody. Hi, Olivia. There's something I'd like to confirm with you, Olivia, if that's okay. Yes. Well, so long as it doesn't take too long. First, what were you and Nick doing on the night of the murder? I was here in the diner. Nick said he was going to the bar for a couple of drinks. Does he go to the bar often? Leaving you to hold up the fort? Y yes. He says he enjoys the conversation with Diane. I thought they went drinking again together that night. Do the three of you ever go drinking together? Well, you see, I I'm really not into art. And your husband is well versed in the arts then, I take it. Oh, yes. Um, looking at art and talking about it is his way of relaxing. <laughs> People just aren't what they seem. Like a certain someone who was into punk rock ten years ago. You are absolutely right, Emily. But you can be an art lover and a liar at the same time. One more thing, Olivia. You just said that you aren't interested in art. 
That's right. And... So, how come I bumped into you at the art gallery? Didn't seem like Nick brought you there. You were there alone. I... Well... I like trees, is the thing. That's why I went there. Surely you'd be better off in the forest rather than an art gallery then. Uh... I think you went to the gallery not to see trees, but to see Diane, right? Uh, uh. You don't want to answer. Or perhaps this isn't the right place to ask. M meet me in the backyard. You can get there from the parking lot. I'll wait for you there for an hour after we close up. They close at 2100. Should we get something to drink and wait? Interesting. So she was actually, but she knows something. I'm kind of curious. So they close at 2200. It is 1600. So that's some fun, shall we? You're wondering what kind of fun could we possibly have? Agent York, what do we do now? We wait. I want to hear what Olivia has to say. Let's kill time until the diner closes. Okay, then I'm gonna make a trip back to the department. I'll see you in the backyard later. Okay, sounds good. See you later then. Yes? Back about Olivia. I assume she wants to tell us something about Nick and Diane. Good. Let's hope it's Little not diddy. just something about the Jack and Dylan. Two American kids in the hot land. So we have a couple hours to kill, right? Make a phone call. We're going to do another side quest while we wait a couple hours. Cause I actually want a couple of his items. We are going to go to... Actually, let's go to the gas station. And we were going to buy something from the milk barn. Which sounds kind of weird. And believe me, you, you want to do this. I mean, quite serious. You, this is probably one of the reasons why I waited to, to go, go back to the uh, old missions. So we go to the milk barn, not the panda. I got spazzed at the game. I'm like, what are you doing, boy? That place is probably still closed until tonight, so we'll probably come back there later. Milk barn! Milk boy! Get him, milk boy! And I love how he just parks in the middle of nowhere. I mean, he parks worse than I do. So you go over here to the counter. You won't like this, but there's a guitar. Or the guitar. Pretty nice size grocery, so let's talk to Keith. Hey, bro! Hey, FBI! Wanna browse the merchandise, man? You've got enough rocking stuff here, like a shop in the city? I'm sure you'll find what you want. Check it out. I heard that you have everything here, is that true? Of course, yo, oh, yeah! But I tend to forget what we got. I always get in trouble because my list isn't what it's supposed to be. Man, for any reason you don't like my list, I'm cool, I'm cool. You could always ask Willie, her list is always perfect. I'll keep that in mind. So, you wanna buy something? Yes. Hold on then. Spiritual map A. <laughs> I love his selection. 
A lot of that doesn't even make sense. Let's actually take the hot dog, because hot dogs are nice. Nice. Now, you saw the first, very first item on the list. Actually, I want the blue. I want both. I want the blue suit too. It looks cool. But this. Hey man, the spot on the map is called Cope's Tunnel. It's one of a couple of places in town where like spooky stuff happens. Oh. I'll tell you a story, okay, man? Sure. But, uh, don't go spreading it around. Spirits, they don't like publicity. Yeah, I'm on. Back when this place was a lumber kingdom, you know, the rockin' 80s, that tunnel was the main connection from the lumber yard to this town. Every day, huge trailers would, like, come in and out. Lots of traffic, dude. Of course, some people were, like, all up in arms. Save our nature, stop pollution, you know. Big business was pushing in here from all over the U.S. of A. Everyone was bickering over the forest. So some of the town people got even more worked up, you know? They started a protest inside the tunnel itself. I guess maybe that was the start of all the... bad times. Bad times? Oh yeah, man. Rough stuff and heavy times, man. The conservationists and the lumber workers faced off with each other. Neither side was backing down. And that made things worse. Amid all this chaos, there was a man and a woman who got engaged. Problem was that the man was a lumberjack, and the woman, she was a tree hugger. They rarely ever fought, but then, one morning, they had a lover's quarrel. People think that her love of nature clashed with his profession. But we'll never know what they really were fighting about that morning. The man shouted. He called her an idiot. And then he stormed out and went to work. If only he had known, that would be the last word he would ever say to her. When he finished his work for the day, he got in his car and drove home. When he got to the tunnel, he saw lantern lights glowing faintly. Those fools, not again. He just thought they were protesting in the tunnel again. And to scare them a little, he decided to speed up. He probably thought they'd all scatter so he wouldn't hit them. But the lights didn't move. In fact, one came toward him. A second later, there was a thud, and the lantern flew up into the air. He slammed on his brakes too late, of course. Then, totally freaked, climbed out to see what had happened. I don't need to tell you who he hit, do I? What's more, in her mangled hand, there was a letter to the head of the lumber mill. A peaceful settlement offer. The woman had no other relatives other than the man. And the lumber mill took no responsibility for the accident. It was going out of business anyways. What happened to the man then? No one saw him again. Some say he killed himself, or simply just vanished. You know, he might still be in the tunnel, weeping over his lost love. So now, some folks say there's a ghost of a young man that haunts the tunnel. I told you it was called Cope's Tunnel, right? Well, check this out. Some people call it Corpse Tunnel now. You better be careful, Mr. FBI, if you go down there by yourself. <laughs> that was pretty creepy. No, don't. Ah, uh, he went out to hit that wrong button. Alright. So, Cope's Tunnel. Should be that hard to find. Been in there once already. Only Jiro on the map at this point. Once you get the map.
What? The controls are driving in this game are terrible. <laughs> I'm driving on the wrong side of the road. In the lead role in Paul Schrader directing back in 1981. That's right, Zach. Cat people. About a woman who turns into a leopard when she falls in love and then eats the person she loves. I thought it was romantic. Real romance right there, Zach. Oh, Nastasia was perfect for that role. Casting her made that movie a success. Alka McDowell as her brother was also a good call. He's like a panther, even without any of that special Hollywood makeup. Now, the new Malcolm McDowell is another girl. You know the movie I'm talking about, right, Zach? Don't tell me you're thinking about Clockwork Orange. Malcolm McDowell, come on, it's pretty obvious. Blue Thunder. It came out in 1983. It was directed by John Barry. Malcolm plays the bad guy in that one. He just totally outshines the hero of the Shire. At least I think so. I have to say, not many people agree with me about Blue Thunder. Zach, if you disagree with any of my opinions about movies, just come out and speak your mind, okay? Just speak your mind. Ah, uh, he knows so many more movies than I do. Hmm. Well, you know what Man, it is so awkward trying to commentate with people keeping leaving and entering. I'm just like, I don't, my commentary just goes 